He had a different name. Fen Harel. Ancient elven god of lies or heroic rebel against tyranny. We received an in-game cinematic sequence from the upcoming game Dragon Age Dreadwolf on Dragon Age Day 2022. So grab some snacks because this will be an in-depth analysis of all of these scenes, as well as comparisons to previous murals and trailers we've seen throughout the years. Of course, all of the links for these scenes, as well as the trailers, are linked down below. But without further ado, let's break down the cinematic scene from Dragon Age Dreadwolf. On Dragon Age Day, December 4th, Bioware tweeted the video out with the caption, Elven God of Lies or Heroic Rebel Against Tyranny. Depends on who you ask. Below they state, we're kicking today off with an in-game cinematic from hashtag Dreadwolf. And I want to first start with that. For many fans of Dragon Age, a lot of us have an understanding of who Solus is and what he did in the Elven Pantheon, etc. So this cinematic scene was not really anything new in terms of knowledge about the next game. However, as several Bioware developers have said, this is an in-game cinematic scene in Dragon Age Dreadwolf. Because this is a cinematic scenario, it is similar to what we see in Dragon Age Origins and even in Dragon Age 2. I'd suppose that this cinematic scenario occurs sometime at the beginning of the game, perhaps even when Solus or Fen Harel is even introduced. Despite how many fans would like to believe this is a trailer, it's not and it was captured directly from the game. This also tells me that they're quite deep into the progression of the game and we shouldn't be too concerned. Well, at least for now. The video on YouTube is unlisted titled, Who is the Dreadwolf? Which indicates that this is a narrative about the Dreadwolf. Well, like that's not obvious. Anyways, Varric's narration in the scenes describes Solus as a companion mage who was obsessed with dreams. However, long ago, Solus had a different name, Fen Harel, the Dreadwolf. Beginning scene. The first scene of Solus is very similar to the tarot card we first see of him in Dragon Age Inquisition. Solus's first tarot card resembles the Hermit, and Solus's default card is pretty much ideal for him because the Hermit represents a degree of seclusion from society. When Solus first enters the Inquisition, he's dealt this card. It expresses his state of being and the inverse meaning also applies to him. While this card describes Solus, he also employs it as a mark to conceal the other aspects of himself. And we know from the Inquisition, we don't realize he actually is a Dreadwolf if he follows the path of a Hermit. With that symbolism out of the way, the scene begins to show the sun behind Solus. The sun is an important factor within Dragon Age lore, primarily regarding the Evaneris and their story. According to World of Thetis Volume 1, the elven god Elgernon is an ancient elven god of vengeance and the sun, the All-Father. The Dalish belief was that Elgernon was born from where the sun and the land both touched. The land loved him so greatly that it bestowed him creatures of the sky and even in the forest, and all manner of wonderful green things. However, the sun saw Elgernon joyous with this under the land's works and grew jealous. Out of spite, he shone his face full upon all the creatures of the earth had created and burned them all to ashes. Elgernon was enraged at his father's actions and vowed vengeance. He ascended to the heavens and battled the sun, determined to win. Eventually, Elgernon threw the sun down from the sky and buried him in a deep abyss created by the land's sorrow. With the sun gone, the world was covered in shadow, and all that remained in the sky were the reminders of Elgernon's battle with his father. And that's what we get out of the sun. And the emblem is also very similar to the Chantry, also known as the Maker in the Indrastian religion and the Chant of Light. But but focusing on the Evaneris' myth, this leads me to assume that Solus resembles something similar to the sun. Perhaps we know very little about Fen Harel's original roots, and this is only the beginning. The Dreadwolf Scene the transition to Solus turning into the Dreadwolf shows a couple of similarities, the first being very similar to Solus's painted murals on the rotunda within Skyhold. According to callback from Tevinter Knight, Skyhold is now left alone with a team who was left to preserve the frescoes within the rotunda. However, they went silent suddenly. In callback's short story, they send a team to investigate their silence. They discover one of the caregivers gutted and nailed to the stable with his own hand. The remainder have been mutilated and their body parts dangling from the cages of the rookery. The murderer appears quickly, a demon of regret, his body fashioned from the plaster of Solus's paintings. The demon has many eyes and resembles a wolf that has absorbed a dragon. It claims to be the regret of a god. 
And to quickly explain, a demon or spirit that is pulled into the physical realm of Thetis from the Veil would have to be very powerful enough to do so by either the will or emotion of someone else. So for a demon to claim they are a regret of a god, it leads us to believe that Souls' thought and power within Thetis is increasing by a lot, causing many spirits and even demons to pull from the Veil and to cause chaos on the lands. Focusing on Solus, in the middle gets an armor change, which is very similar to what we see of Solus from the Game Awards and even Gamescon back in 2020. And with even having the same kind of staff reminds me of the Hermit once again, which still wants to tell me that Solus is again in seclusion and or isolation. His insignia that we see, or brooch, is not really drawn out to show any specifics, but relates to another concept art of Solus from Gamescon, which was again back in 2020. However, when zooming in, it doesn't remotely look the same now, specifically because the game's cons look like an eye or a swirl symbol within the middle, and now for this cinematic scene, it almost looks like a tree or even crested wings within the badge. I mean, of course, we are probably looking at two different art styles from differing Bioware developers, but I'm sure that Insignia will come into play in Dragon Age Dreadwolf one way or another. With the large Dreadwolf behind Solus' back, it is again depicted with six red blazing eyes. Of course, this is a common depiction of the Dreadwolf from many concepts concept arts and trailers and murals we see in the game, so that is nothing new except resembling the similarities of the Dreadwolf being an embodiment of pride. Souls' name translation from Elven actually means pride as well. Of course, the pride demon Inquisition we see has been debated to even have seven eyes or even nine eyes for some fans, but so far the eyes of the Dreadwolf have been consistent and we can lean on the notion that the Dreadwolf is very similar to a pride demon. Moving on, the sun in the middle of the Dreadwolf has shifted. It shifts into a golden globe or an orb but we see that orb move into something different in another shot. The black tendrils on the left and right sides of this image reminds me of the Blight and its magical component. With Solus needing the Red Lyrium Idol in the most recent comics and even into Venture Nights, it leads me to believe that Solus is definitely involved with the Blight and is using its power to destroy the Veil, potentially. The Ritual Scene Primarily calling this the ritual scene because it literally resembles some sort of ritual Solus used to trap both the Evanerus and the Forgotten Ones into their respective realms. The golden orb in the middle is shown with a gong-like noise with another mural-like scene. Now we're getting into some of the juicy bits within the lore. This mural closely depicts a lot of art we see in the Vir Dathara from Trespasser DLC and Inquisition, as well as the Dreadwolf Rises teaser trailer that was released way back in 2018. Let's start with the glyph markings within this circle. Of course, we cannot fully see the extent of the full circle to show all the major patterns of this glyph, but it does show a lot of hidden secrets from Dragon Age regardless. Ferric is stating that the Dread Wolf did imprison the false elven gods of Thetis, but looking at these symbols, it leads me to believe that this is a magical spell Solus possibly used to imprison the gods. However, what catches my eye that looks familiar within these glyphs is the three circles colliding together. There is a lot we can tinfoil about, but the closest thing I can relate to is that we see that something's very similar in the Danan Hanin from Inquisition. This place was a large elven ruin for the final resting place of the Emerald Knights, an elven group responsible for protecting the old elven nation of the Dales. There is a small area in the ruins that resembles the exact three colliding circles found in this cinematic scene. It really could mean anything, but the elves after the established of the Veil most likely knew the knowledge of what truly happened and why the Veil was created. The two golden orbs shown within the circle could represent the sun and the moon, or even the two moons that exist in Thetis. One is known to be bigger and the smaller moon is known to be named Santina. There's also a notion and prophecy that an eclipse could arise for Solus's plan, and it leads me to believe that this could definitely be possible with what we are shown here. The Emergent Compendium is a book found in the Black Emporium from Dragon Age 2. It was rumored to explain some future prophecy in future upcoming Dragon Age games, and even some fans cracked out the codes. And we are left with sentences that might give us complete explanations for the mural given. Two shadowed spheres, an eclipse as Fen Harrell stirred. Perhaps this could explain the overlapping spheres we see a lot in most of these Dragon Age murals. And even the Vir Dathara also references the same thing as well. For one moment, there is a vivid image of two overlapping spheres. Unknown flowers bloom inside their centers, then it fades. Another thing I want us to kind of acknowledge is the clock sound that I hear in the background, with the magical glyph moving in a clockwork style. This is another thing that might lead us to believe Solus's ritual involved more than what we could ever imagined. I hate to bring this up, but now it seems like there's a possibility that Solus could have used time magic to even create the veil. No, God, please, no, no! 
In all seriousness, it does seem fishy that Bioware introduced time magic with Alexius and Corypheus. Temporal or time magic is definitely possible within Thetis, but perhaps the veil was created by slowing down time to trap each elven god into their respected realms. It is certainly tinfoily, and when it comes to temporal magic, now everything is in the realm of possibility because shifting time and creating paradoxes can manipulate the very existence of Thetis as a whole. And moving away from the time magic theory, let's look at the obvious depiction of what looks likely to be the Golden City. The Golden City looks to be a floating city with this look. Which now I can finally rest assured that the Golden City is now confirmed to be Arlathan. Arlathan was also known to have floating cities among the clouds, and this was even quoted by Solus. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. That is what was lost. So now we see a floating city within the middle of this mural. Let's move on to the Evanirus' faces. As I mentioned before, a lot of these heads of the Evanirus are shown throughout the Vigar Dathara and even in the Deep Roads in Trespasser DLC from Inquisition. And there is one specific mural from the Virdathara that shows a huge similarity to the Evanirus shown in this cinematic scene. The common theme with all of these murals is that the Evanirus are outside of the border of these inner circles. With there being seven figures, we do know that there are nine elven gods. It would make sense due to Mithal being proclaimed dead before the creation of the Veil, so each of these figures could resemble a trapped god within their realm. Although the dragon-like head for one of them kind of looks way too close to be Mithal, but let's get back on topic. For the sake of my sanity, I won't be guessing which head belongs to who or anything of that nature. However, i rather guess who they are in a different way. So let's get to the imagery of the previous murals we have already witnessed for Dragon Age Dreadwolf. In the Dreadwolf Rises teaser, trailer mural, it shows seven half spheres as well. And the main thing I want to point out is the golden figures. Back in 2018, the two golden half circles were theorized to be the last two remaining blights within Thetis. With the Wardens already knowing which old gods are left, it leads me to match up the two remaining old gods from the other mural within the cinematic trailer. The two slumbering old gods who have not been blighted as archdemons are known as Razakale, the Dragon of Mystery, and Lusakan, the Dragon of Night. This is where I actually cracked the code accidentally. I'm sorry, but this is insane because Bioer has always shown it in plain sight. The constellations you usually find within Inquisition will give you a codex. The Dogian scholars within the codex usually link the old gods with the Evanirus within these constellations. So with Razakale being known as the constellation Alluvia, it states, owing primarily to the popular Orlesian tale of the same name, the constellation Alluvia is commonly referred to as Sacrifice. We know that Solus states a god who is known as the goddess of sacrifice as Andrul. And with Lusican, their constellation Tanir Ibrium states called Shadow in the common parlance, likely due to the ancient association with the constellation Tenebrium with Lusican, the old god of darkness and the night. This lends credence to the widely held belief that Tenebrium was a name meant to supplant an older elven association, perhaps with the elven god Falandin, sometimes represented in tales as a giant owl. With all of this codex and knowledge aside, now it leads me to believe that those two remaining gods in the cinematic trailer we have are now located. Andril and Falandine are now also known as Rezakil and Lusakan, which are the two remaining blights within Thetis. So now we can conclude that the old gods are now the Evanirus, and I've highlighted them for convenience to make sense. With these Evanirus' faces, they're also shown in the 2020 Dragon Age teaser trailer as well. So there you have it, Andrul and Faladin are the two perpetrators within all of these trailers. And while we may believe that Solus is the big bad, those two people of the Elven Pantheon are more likely to be linked to Mithal and even her betrayal. According to Solus and Trespasser, Mithal was known to be killed by her own kind, the Elven Pantheon. Codices within the game about Andrul and even Falandin dealt with Mithal's judgment upon them. Andrul was sapped and defeated by Mithal when she tried to hunt the Forgotten Ones and became blighted. And even Falandin started wars to gain more worshippers for him. Mithal rallied the gods against him and bloodied him within his own temple. With both of those stories, we have every reason to believe that these two gods have a huge vendetta against the All-Mother of the Elven Pantheon, Mithal, and potentially could have killed her. 
And also, the only two gods that Morgan and Solas talk about in Mathal's temple are also Andrul and Falandin. So it leads us to believe that these two gods are most likely either going to be dealt with in Dragon Age Dreadwolf, or Solas really needs to go back and seek full revenge against them for Mathal's death. The Black City Scene Moving onward to the Black City scene, Varric states Solus imprisoned them and created a veil that split our world from the raw magic of the Fade, with a sound of what seems to be a lock turning in the background. This would now explain or even theorize that the imprisonment came from the Blight, or either the Blight was seeping out from the Evanerus during their millennia within their prisons, which in turn made the Golden City Arlathon black, and has been corrupting the Fade with each passing age. Of course, the border of the circle clearly resembles the depiction of the Veil that keeps the two realms separate within Thetis, with the black tendrils surrounding the Black City, and then clouds the entire circle into black corruption. This again semi-confirms that the Golden City and Black City is synonymous with the ancient city Arlathon, the city of the ancient Elven. I mean, there isn't much to decipher here. It seems pretty straightforward that the Evanirs' prisons are becoming more and more blighted, but the other thing we can theorize is that souls could have been using blight magic to entrap them as well. Or the more likely scenario, the blight's power is being held back by the veil. The golden orb, now black, looks almost moon-like, which makes me believe that this is again a relation to the moon. But it could also just be an art style and nothing really crazy going going on here at all. With all of this knowledge aside, let's get on with the last scene in this cinematic. Breaking the Veil Scene so let's begin with Solus. As depicted, he looks to be holding a weapon of some sort. The closest thing that I can see as this being any resemblance to is the sword certainty that Meredith wielded in Dragon Age 2. Meredith is known to forge a blade out of the cursed Red Lyrium idol, and we know from the most recent comics and the book To Winter Nights that Solus needs this specific idol and even claims it to be his. Although it does seem to be different in shape, according to To Winter Nights, the idol is also known to shapeshift to different types of weapons according to whoever wields it. So perhaps this weapon is a sword, or perhaps it even is a staff. Regardless, this weapon does have a unique shape to it, and it makes me lean on to the closest link that this blasted sword is similar to certainty, and that Red Lyrium Idol's potential menace is not finished. And there seems to be another magical glyph within the scene. I try my best to clear it up, but here's the finalized glyph. Again, the similarities with the overlapping spheres and even the glyphs looking like clockwork lead me to theorize that some of the time magic does have a component with tearing down the veil and even restoring the world of the ancient times, the world of the elves. I will save the elven people, even if it means this world must die. But with that, we are going to wrap up. What are your opinions on this cinematic scene? Are we excited or we are wanting some more? I'm surely wanting a little more, of course, just because I would love to see what this game is all about with our new protagonist, but there might hopefully be something, fingers crossed, at the Game Awards. If not, then thank you for sticking this long on the breakdown. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Dragon Age lore, and I will see you in the next video.